Okay, yeah, good chat. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Um, ladies and gentlemen, well, I would like to um, start this session with uh, what is supposed to be a very basic uh, introduction for those of you who are not familiar with uh, C CMR. Uh, so I apologize for those of you who are experts, and I know that uh, many of you are. Um, so I will be talking about uh, cardiac function and how to, uh, to do it. Um, I have no uh, conflict of interest. Uh, the first point I would like to make is to, uh, re to, to set the fact that uh, cardiac function is the, uh, uh, a set of uh, sequences, a, a module, a CMR module, which is uh, part of every single CMR examination. Uh, not all the other techniques that are more or less uh, uh, part of the many or some of the examination are not done uh, on every patient. One of the reasons why um, it is a such uh, useful um, module is because um, a, a, s a simple index such as ejection fraction is very powerful from as, as a prognostic index. And I would like to uh, share with you this uh, uh, data that are, have been from the past. You know, it's a 94 uh, study, the CAS study. That showed that a patient that have uh, ejection fraction below 35% have four times higher a chance to, to die uh, than patients that have uh, ejection fraction over 50%. Even delayed enhancement is not such a so, uh, such powerful uh, index. So there are many ways uh, people try to do it, but there are one way to do it that have been uh, put on paper in the recommendation of uh, the SCMR. And I would like to uh, explain you as a step-by-step -step how to do it. So usually we start with, uh, with a pilot and we take the axial pilot to uh, set three slices that go from, from the, the, the apex and the mid of the mitral valve. So you get these uh, images, and again, you repeat it, uh, center of the apex, center of the mitral valve, and you get a uh, horizontal long longitudinal axis view of the heart. Then you do a short axis view uh, to cover especially the, the aortic root that will be very useful uh, later on. Then you take and you copy this plane and you adjust it uh, out of the short axis view uh, to cover the anterior wall and the inferior wall and you get this nice uh, view of the horizontal, vertical long longitudinal uh, view of the heart, two chamber view of the heart. Then you take this view and uh, you make it, you, you make it um, below the, uh, the this point, which is the, the lower uh, point of the aortic root, uh, to actually uh, cover the septum, the interventricular septum and the uh, uh, anteratrial septum, and you get the four chamber view. Then when you have these two views, you are ready to go for the short axis planning. So uh, you have to be careful to, uh, to have it perpendicular to both axes, like uh, shown in this uh, um, uh, slide. And you uh, plan a, a stack of images that cover the heart from the, the uh, AV groove up to the point uh, of the apex. Try to cover the whole thing. Uh, you're allowed to have a gap um, of at least, at most, uh, two millimeters. It's usually better not to have gaps between slices. Slices are uh, six to eight millimeters. Uh, be careful to have the same number of phases uh, across all uh, short axis slices, otherwise you will have problem with the post processing. And uh, be careful not to try to be in the plane of the uh, mitral valve because the uh, mitral valve insertion of the anterior, wall, the anterior valve is more anterior than the posterior. So always try to be perpendicular to the, this axis uh, from the uh, top of the, uh, uh, of the LV and the midpoint uh, of the um, mitral valve. Now there is an optional uh, view that I would like to detail quickly. Uh, you can actually uh, take a plan that goes through uh, the, uh, uh, in the middle of the aortic root and you get 
uh, this view, uh, which is the LVOT, Leventicular Outflow Tract view, uh, which nicely show the, the valve, the aortic valve and the mitral valve. So there are different strategies that can be used uh, to, um, to uh, acquire uh, such uh, data. There, there is, of course, the, the conventional way, uh, which is a CNA SSFP. Uh, usually you take one breast hold uh, at a, uh, uh, as a, uh, for every, sli uh, every um, level. So it takes uh, between 10 to 14 uh, breast holds to cover the whole heart. And there are now uh, alternative ways, such as uh, sparse data, data sampling with iterative uh, reconstruction, so-called uh, compressed sensing, that are actually very uh, useful uh, for um, um, uh, the uh, acquisition uh, and to cover the heart. Sorry about the movie, but it doesn't play. Uh, because it, it helps to have um, um, an approximately uh, times, uh, 10 times uh, faster acquisition scheme to cover the whole heart. So this, uh, this um, option has been validated by a number of papers. Um, um, I have put here two, uh, two of them. And it is quite useful because you can do it very fast, uh, even though the uh, image quality is uh, uh, below uh, what you get out of uh, high-res uh, CNA SSFP. Um, here are some tricks, and uh, uh, I would like to remind that actually you have to uh, um, set the uh, temporal sampling for every patient. You cannot just consider, you, I'm using usually 35 milliseconds in every patient or 50 milliseconds. You have to adjust it in a such way that you have the, a constant number of phases uh, uh, across the cardiac cycle. So this is just a drawing uh, that shows that, for, for instance, for a patient that have a, a 60 beat per minute uh, heart rate, so it's a 10 millis 1,000 milliseconds. If you divide it by 20, it means that the phase duration is uh, below uh, 50 milliseconds. If you have a, a double uh, a heart rate, uh, the, uh, the phase duration will be much lower. It's, it will be uh, less than 30 milliseconds. So do it very carefully because otherwise you won't be sampling properly the, 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 the systolic phase and it will be even worse for uh, the, uh, and the diastolic function that I will be not covering in this topic because it's a very long topic. So once you have done it properly, uh, covering well the, the whole heart, then you have the, um, the, the uh, quantification step for the LV function uh, assessment and you will be uh, drawing uh, manually or with uh, some uh, more advanced software, the endocardium in red and the epicardium in uh, green uh, in diastolic phase and at least one phase, the end systolic phase, the smallest area uh, in uh, every slices. You apply actually a, a, a method which is uh, called the Simpson, Simpson method, or the Simpson rule, where you actually stack um, this um, each individual um, uh, area times the distance factor uh, to uh, actually create a volume. And you get out of that uh, the, uh, the, the end diastolic volume and systolic volume, stroke volume, which is different between two, uh, and uh, divided by the end diastolic, this is the end ejection fraction, and you can get as well the mass. Most of the time, these uh, data are uh, um, divided by the, um, the surface of the patient to normalize patient um, between long, very large patient and very small patient. So this is an important step. So why we do it carefully? Uh, this is because um, it is known now for uh, two decades um, that MR is doing a very good job and uh, even better job than uh, alternative methods such as ECHO. This is a uh, one of the work, and I think this is a nice piece of work that has been done by um, uh, the, the team of uh, Dudley Penel, uh, that where they they've done an interstudy uh, reproducibility um, for MR and echo. So they, they put this patient in the scanner, they remove the patient, and then they put it back, and they have been looking how it affects uh, MR uh, values, and they, do, they, they did the same for ultrasound, and uh, you can see here that uh, there are major difference uh, in terms of fraction reproducibility against the uh, echo. For every, um, every single measurement, uh, you can see that the coefficient of variability is much lower with MR. 
What does that mean? It means that if you do a research study, and I'm sure that most of you in this room are doing research studies, it means that it translates is uh, uh, a much uh, more power, statistical power, so less sample, le le um, a smaller sample. So that makes big difference in terms of money. So for just for, in for instance, if you're considering uh, showing a 10 milliliter change in the diastolic volume, uh, with ultrasound, it requires uh, 39 um, uh, subject or uh, mouse, uh, except, uh, and if you're using uh, CMR, you divide it by four. If you are interested in mass, then it will be much, much even better. You have a 10, 10 times uh, difference, so the, the, from 132 to 12, so 13, so it's a 90% uh, uh, reduction in sample size. So I think this is a very uh, important uh, take-home message. Um, going back to, to tricks, um, there are a number of questions you will have to deal with. The, how do you deal with papier muscle? Uh, you have to, remind, uh, to remember that uh, papier muscle uh, corresponds to uh, 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 almost 9% of the LV mass. Um, and this, is done, this was uh, um, done in the MESA study. Uh, this proportion increase if you have a hypertrophic myocardium. So it means that they, the, this, uh, the, if you express it um, indexed by the surface, they, it's almost uh, three times higher. So um, it is usually, uh, um, in practice, it's, usually, it's, it's a good thing to uh, take these uh, contours uh, and considering pap muscle in hypertrophic myopathy. Uh, but in most of the other studies, most of the people are using smooth contours, excluding pap muscles. Um, but you have to uh, report what you've done uh, in the report or in the methodology of a paper. Um, what about our RV function? So there, there are different ways to do RV function. Uh, you can use the same planes as long as you cover the whole uh, RV wall. Uh, so you do a cine short axis stack of images, no, no additional uh, acquisition, and then you have to contour all these uh, um, all these uh, contours of the RV, like in this uh, dilated cardiomyopathy. Or second option is to actually do uh, a axial uh, transverse um, uh, planes, um, like in here. So you plane just uh, transverse planes uh, covering the whole heart uh, for the uh, RV side. Uh, it, it is the uh, identification of tricuspid plane, so it provides better reproducibility, uh, supposedly. It should be favored in congenitals. Um, it should be favored in very large RV. Uh, actually, this is the data from this paper. But, uh, and this, this is a big but, uh, it requires additional time because you have to, to do ad additional uh, acquisition. So, um, there are, <laughs> Again, uh, a different option is to use a uh, compressed sensing. You can do, this is an example where you do, um, sorry about the CNA, but again, it should be working. Uh, you can do a, a, a stack in short axis, one breast hold, a second stack in, uh, in transverse. Then actually you get um, a, a proper, the, sorry about that, can, you, can I go back to the previous slide? I don't know. Could you go back two, t two slides? No. Hello. Vous pouvez revenir en arrière de deux slides. Okay. Sometimes French is useful. Okay. Uh, so actually, um, uh, here you c you can see that uh, there is a, a, a good uh, delineation of the RV, and you can uh, do the quantification and uh, answer the question. So two breath holds, and you get uh, the, the 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 information. Okay. You have to keep in mind a, a number of things. First, um, it depends on the gender and uh, uh, age. Uh, so uh, this is the data from the MESA study where you see the, 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 the drop in the uh, uh, end diastolic volume. Uh, this is bo both uh, true for male and female and all the other parameters. So take this in consideration if you do a pathophysiology or physiological study. Uh, this, is, uh, this was true for LV, this is true for RV as well, uh, so I will not go in details, but uh, this should be considered. Another issue that, that should be considers, uh, considered is the, the uh, impact of training and exercise. 
um, this uh, this is very frequently uh, I mean at least in uh, in our institution we have a lot of people that are doing uh, running a lot of running and depending on the how, mu how many hours you do uh, uh, per week it can go up to 15 hours but uh, most of the time uh, people do uh, some kind of three to five hours then actually there is an, uh, uh, a physiological increase of the volumes for the both the LV and the uh, and the RV so this should be considered whenever you do that because uh, between athlete and non-athlete there is a 30 milliliter difference for both RV and, and diastolic uh, um, for the LV as well but this is this increase is balanced between both ventricle okay uh, this, this has some impact. For instance, if you have um, uh, uh, athletes that have T-wave inversion and that you have to, to, to consider whether they are related to a, 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 a arrhythmogenic uh, dysplasia, well, this paper is very nice because it shows that uh, you should not use the volume of the end, uh, end diastolic volume of the RV. I don't have any more. Yeah, good. Um, this, this is a poor discriminator uh, um, index, whereas you should use other uh, index to discriminate uh, this uh, at least with T-wave T, T inversion uh, um, from the, the, the true, uh, the actual uh, RVC patient. So this, this is an important um, uh, uh, information to have in mind. Uh, going to the uh, regional function, uh, you have to know that we are using something which is very basic, but this is the uh, 70 segment uh, HA segmentation model. So you actually uh, uh, you consider each uh, different region uh, to put it on this bullseye view of the heart uh, with three sh short axis view and uh, 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 17 segments on the apex. And you uh, uh, consider in daily practice with a visual analysis, uh, whether this uh, segment uh, have a normal kinesia up to a dyskinesia. So this is the scale we are using. But as you know, this is quite subjective, but it's what we do every day. Other option is to take this data. You do contours, you can do a, a measurement of the sickness, uh, wall thickening measurements, but uh, it happens that when you do qualitative uh, assessment, uh, uh, well, you, and you have uh, different readers, there is a good agreement between uh, readers. The point eight, uh, whether they are patient or controls. If you consider well thickening measurement, uh, well, the, the, there is a, 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 a drop, a tremendous drop of the uh, re reproducibility across the readers. Why? Because they are actually, uh, it's very easy to make uh, errors of few pixels. Okay, so this is not used. There are additional factors that explain why we don't, uh, there are limitations for the regional function assessment using quantitative, um, uh, using this data, is there is no tracking the same material point between the end diastolic and, and systole. This is because the, there are fibers in the heart, we will be discussing that uh, later on, that actually induce torsion of the heart. And the second and last uh, point, that it is an intrinsic uh, in limitation of uh, echo and uh, conventional techniques uh, with MR, is that there we are having an intrinsically um, transmural measurement that does not distinguish subendocardium and, and subepicardium function. Uh, there are many uh, other alternative techniques. Uh, there is MR tagging that can distinguish an endo and epicardial function. There is 2D, 3D dance, uh, like in this example. And you have also CNA uh, feature tracking uh, post processing that can be applied on the uh, already acquired data to uh, quantify motion. Uh, I have there, there well, just a, a single uh, sentence on that. Uh, the idea of using uh, these uh, strain measurements is, uh, is very good because even though the, 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 the ejection fraction remain uh, normal in sub in starting uh, disease, you can actually different differentiate the patient and uh, normal subject with uh, changes in the global longitudinal strain. As a conclusion, I hope you have understand that this is a, this is a fundamental part of the, every CMR exam. Uh, every young scientist in the room should know how to do it now. Um, this is a gold standard for cardiac function. There are many um, uh, advanced techniques that will be uh, discussed later on uh, during this uh, session. Thank you for your attention.